seed oils are damaging to your mitochondria. And the fact that I told you to put that in your body will haunt me for the rest of my days. So Elizabeth Zott said seed oils can be damaging to our mitochondria. Is there any truth to this? Please just tell me what's happening to me in plain English with, without the mumbo jumbo. First off, we have to know that our bodies and organs are made of cells. Cells are made of all sorts of stuff like membranes and organelles, which are made of molecules, including fats. Omega-6 fatty acids are some of the fats that can be used by our cells to make cell membranes, including those in the organelle known as the mitochondria. Mitochondria are vital for our existence because they are literally the powerhouse of the cell, and thus our bodies. They allow us to do all sorts of things that we like to do every day, like live. If something goes wrong with your mitochondria, then something will go wrong with you in general. Mitochondrial dysfunction basically means that, for one reason or another, the mitochondria in your cells are damaged and are not working properly. Which is bad. Really bad. According to this study, mitochondrial damage is a major contributing factor to chronic diseases like heart disease, obesity, type 2 diabetes, and the big C word. But the question for us here is, is there a way that excess consumption of seed oils could cause mitochondrial damage like Elizabeth Sott tells us? Or is it just a mistake on the writer's part? This is where things get interesting because, yes, it seems that excess consumption of omega-6 fatty acids can indeed cause processes that can damage our mitochondria. I'm going to do my best to explain this in as simple terms as possible. One of the main problems with omega-6 fatty acids is that they oxidize extremely quickly. Okay, what does that mean? If you have a cast iron skillet and you put water on it and then you leave it out in the sun, it'll rust. That rust is iron that's been oxidized by the oxygen in the water. It's basically decomposing. When this happens in our cells, it's bad. We don't want this and the cell doesn't want this either. So when we eat fats, part of what happens is they go to making cell membranes, which includes the membranes of the mitochondria. If we eat a supersized order of fries, guess what? The linoleic acid from the soybean oil or canola oil gets used in our cells. The linoleic acid, now in the membranes of all of our cells and mitochondria, starts to oxidize and break down to a toxic compound known as 4-hydroxynonanol, or 4-HNE. From here, our body sends glutathione, one of the main antioxidants in our bodies, to remove the toxic 4-HNE from the cells. So why is this a problem? The key is quantity, it seems. In low levels, 4-HNE might actually have a beneficial hormetic effect. Hormesis is the idea that by taking a little bit of something harmful, like a poison, it might have some positive effects without causing permanent damage. At higher levels though, 4-HNE will cause a cascade of problems eventually leading to the unaliving of the cell. 4-HNE itself has been linked to diseases like Alzheimer's disease, cataracts, atherosclerosis, diabetes, and the big C word. Seems like there's some truth to Elizabeth Zott's statement after all, even though the studies about it wouldn't actually happen until like 50 years after the show takes place. But how does this affect us? Imagine you're downing 25% of your calories as seed oils every day so your body's glutathione stores are going to fight the 4-HNE being produced by the omega-6s from the seed oils oxidizing in your cells. What happens if your body needs to send glutathione elsewhere in your body to fight off other free radicals or molecules that are damaging other cells? Now imagine you're eating 2% of your calories as omega-6s. You're getting enough for your body to operate, but you're not producing high levels of 4-HNE. So your glutathione can theoretically go do other things and fight other fights, not get all of this 4-HNE from the seed oils out of your body. The question we have to investigate is how much omega-6s do we need in our diet to be healthy, and at what level can they become problematic? As I've been walking around Guangzhou Market, it's become even more clear to me that so many of us are eating too much omega-6s. Are these oils ubiquitous around the world because they're healthy for us, or are they all over because they're cheap? Considering how massive the seed oil industry is, and how there's huge demand for cooking oils, it's currently not possible to just stop using them. People gotta eat. It's evident that more studies need to be done, but if it turns out that these oils are not as great as some of us think they are, we'll need to find some alternatives. These alternatives include fats that have been used for millennia like beef tallow, ghee, butter, lard, coconut oil, and some newer fats like blends that are made through fermentation. 
Anyone that's saying that increasing seed oils in our diet is 100% better for us needs to know that there's still scientific debate around this because consuming more seed oils exposes us to higher levels of 4-H&E. And higher levels of 4-H&E are associated with some serious diseases. So what do you think? After doing all the research for this video, I'd say there's a good reason why the writers of Lessons in Chemistry made Elizabeth Zott's character not want to use seed oils in her cooking. Considering this information, I'm going to continue limiting my seed oil intake, but that's just what works for me. I'll get into why I stopped eating seed oils in a different video. It's always good to do your own research and do what's best for you. If you're thriving on seed oils, do your thing. I had issues for years that weren't going away, and this is just where I've arrived at, and it's made me more curious about why some people do better after eliminating excess seed oils from their diets. With the amount of seed oils and food increasing around the world, at the very least we should be paying attention to see how this trend is impacting people's health in different populations. Walking around Guangzhou Market has made it painfully clear that we're using a ton of these oils, whereas 100 years ago, we'd probably see mostly boiled food out here. If you're lost in the woods with this one, please leave a comment below. I'm sure there's a lot for us to talk about and I probably got some of the intricacies wrong, but take a deep breath, relax, grab a glass of water, because this is meant to just give us a general idea of what's going on with the seed oil debate. But what do you think? Do you think we should talk more about the nuances of what we eat? Is the widespread use of industrialized seed oil safe? Is the issue of toxicity a debate about chronic toxicity or acute toxicity? Do you eat seed oils or do you try to avoid them? Let me know in the comments below. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, it means a whole lot. Please hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Take care.